Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last stretch of this wonderful D2 conference. We need to meet and hear from our international speech contestants and find out who won. Now, earlier today I had the honor of introducing Rebecca Murray as a speaker, but what you may not know is that Rebecca Murray and I, uh, we were part of a team of people that started a club. In the middle of COVID, while clubs were shutting down and clubs were getting smaller, a group of people gathered together and said, we want to start a club that focuses on humor and storytelling. And I was one of those people, and Rebecca was one of those people, and we started Laugh Lab Story Masters, which is an advanced club focusing on humor and storytelling. And for two years, for more than two years, Rebecca and I knew each other and became friends, and we had never met in person, because it was all on Zoom. <laughs> now, the other thing I want to share with you is one of the most fun meetings I had. Uh, Rebecca and I decided to do a meeting on uh, stepping up and preparing your marketing materials so you can market your talk. And we were trying to figure out how to do that and make an impression. And while we were talking about it on the, on the phone, we started switching, uh, dropping into these Austrian accents. And I don't know if you remember Saturday Night Live from 15, 20 years ago when they Hans and Franz, the brothers who were weightlifting. Well, we decided to do Hans and Franz. And I put on my sweatshirt with stuffed socks in my, in, my, uh, in my arms, and Rebecca put on a sweatshirt and stuffed socks in her arms, and we did Hans and Franz. She was my Franz, she was Hans to my Franz, and it was hysterical, and it was fun. So, my friend, Rebecca Burke. Yay! Thank you so much, Curly Man. <laughs> we used that joke when we did the Hans and Franz thing. I am absolutely honored to be asked to interview our speech contestants from this year's International Speech Contest that happened last weekend. I'd love to see a show of hands if you attended that amazing contest. Inspirational, educational, heartfelt, aspiring, fantastic. Please welcome the competitors that are in the room today. There are two that I know are not with us, Anch, Anch Bari and Zim Pham. Please welcome Jiling Wu, Priya Chris, Chris Sefan, Basam, Thomas Hager, Paula Lu, and Kendra Smith to the stage. <laughs> Priya, are you here today? Does anybody see Priya? I don't see her. We'd love to have you in speaking order, so we'll have Jilin, then Thomas, Paula, and Kendra right next to me here. Right next to me. What we'll do, and all in a row. Here they are, all in a row. Come on up, come on up, come on down to the front of the stage so we can see you. We're going to take one picture here together. Smile for Sasha. I'll ask a couple questions. We'll talk for about two minutes, and then we'll pose for Sasha once again with a certificate of participation. Once your interview is over, you'll move to the end of the line. You'll stay up here for the entire time, all four of you, okay? All right. Let's start with our first interview. I actually would like some assistance Kyle, if you wouldn't mind joining me to assist with the, or, or Karen. Karen, do you want to be the certificate holder? And because I lost my third hand on the way here. <laughs> Jiling, it wasn't lost on me that you gave your beautiful speech about your mother the day before Mother's Day. If you would, 
if you would please share with us the message for those of you who did not hear your beautiful speech. If you could maybe summarize your speech in 20 seconds. Give us the, the essential message. Uh, 17 years ago, that was my most difficult time. I gave birth to my first baby, and uh, I swore in the bed, I must treat my mom well in the future, even my mom in love, because being a mom is not easy, so difficult. But uh, one month later, my mom had a heart attack. But I had no money, so I struggled. And finally, my mom gave me suggestion or advice. So I overcame that difficulty. So I believe I can, you can. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, you know what, I don't think we need this extra mic. I'm going to take that and it and put it down. You know they say in Toastmasters, there's a saying, when you're interviewing, don't lose control of the mic. <laughs> Remember that one too. When offered a mic, accept it, but don't lose the control of it because it might, let's see, move this over here. Okay, that's great, yes. And you basically, what you did was you took your mother's advice, you learned from yourself, you um, raised $36,000 to pay for heart surgery for her mother, and your mother lived 11 years more because of that. When you practice your speech, you walk through the neighborhood. I'm wondering if you could tell us briefly how that looks for your neighbors. Do you, just, <laughs> do you talk out loud when you're practicing your speeches? Uh, I just walk in my uh, neighborhood uh, and uh, I practice with a gesture, for example, who is something <laughs> was like that. Yeah, and then uh, outside, I was uh, so relaxed and the emotion from the sky and the earth. So good, that feeling. I hope you can practice when, you're, uh, when you are walking. Yes. <laughs> practice when you're walking, exactly. So your gestures, your words, everything. So you basically put on a show for your neighborhood, <laughs> essentially, yeah. I forgot to ask you what club you're representing in the contest. Then you have the Evening Toastmaster Club. One last question because we are a bit shy on contestants. I love this quote. Would you mind reading it and tell us what that means to you? Oh, my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I will read it and you'll tell us what it means to you. I wish to see over the distant horizon, and so I climb another level of the pavilion. Ah. And who said that? This is from an ancient Chinese poet whose name is Wang Zhenghuan from maybe 8th century AD. He uh, hoped to, to see the big world. You know, that time was not like today. I have the same feeling. So I see the big, big world. And also I wanted to tell him I see. Uh, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Awesome. Right, we're going to get a picture of you with your certificate. Here you go. Congratulations. What an achievement to make it to the district stage. speech 
I was so excited to hear you and so impressed with your vulnerability, your level of vulnerability. Raise your hand if you saw Tom's speech. It's absolutely unforgettable and so important. You talked about how writing helped you get through difficult times in your life, but from reading your profile, I found out that you have a collection of fountain pens. So help us learn about what makes a good fountain pen. Tell us about this collection you have and your favorite fountain pen. I'm brand new to the fountain pen hobby. I just discovered it just a few months ago. Uh, actually, I had most of my pens out in the car. The one I have at my desk is the cheapest one I found, a $4 fountain pen. Now, those of you who have any familiarity with, familiarity with fountain pens know that sometimes some of them cost several hundred and sometimes even several thousand dollars. My most expensive one so far was only 60. <laughs> And that was the one that I wrote the first draft of my depression contest speech with. And interestingly, I had one of the most powerful highs after finishing writing that speech with the pen on paper. That's what a pen can do. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm feeling some of the emotion right now just being next to you. And I, I just want to say again how meaningful it was to hear you speak, not only for the first time, but how powerful you were and are. It's my pleasure to present this certificate of participation. And now we'll pose for Sasha. representing in the contest. I represent the Seattle Sunrise Toastmasters, my home club. And that meets in what area of Seattle? Northeast Seattle. Northeast Seattle. I happen to know that you, well, and it's no surprise, this woman is a dancer. This is a theme with, with some of our, isn't, isn't she lovely? dancing and tell us how you engage with dancing these days. I came to dancing uh, at the age of 11 or 12 and prior to that I had no notion of it. I came to it through baton twirling and it was the first time that I actually moved with, to music and I asked my coach how to get better and she said ballet. We couldn't afford ballet for long. Um, I took a couple of classes and then my mom said we can't afford it. So I went through my DIY phase of ballet somewhere <laughs> in, in a book and I would practice every day until a couple of years later my mom found a modern dance class that was sponsored by the French Institute. <coughs> and I've been a modern dancer since, since. And I do go to dance class twice a week. It's modern dance. You ask me once, what is modern dance? And I say, this is the kind of dance when you roll on the floor, you don't wear shoes, you clean the floor for other people who are like dance. And, and that's modern dance for you. That's wonderful. You sent me a picture of you with a t shirt, a big, was it a dance a thon? What was that? Uh, it was a dance intensive workshop, and um, you would, it lasted two weeks. And you would dance, you would have classes every day, weekdays, one and a half hour of class, and then you would have one and a half hour of rehearsal because at the end of the two weeks you'd be in a performance. And that was years ago, but I wear this, I still have the shirt. What does it say on the front? It says Strictly Seattle, and then all the names of the teachers that were in that session. And uh, I posted it on Facebook, and some of the teachers still remember they love the t shirt. <laughs> well, another thing too, Paula is the second contestant who spoke about her mother and mother's love the day before Mother's Day with perfect timing. Thank you so much for, and congratulations for being here. And we'll close with Sasha. Congratulations. 
Congratulations, thank you. And move on over, Kendra. Now, I happen to know that you're a dancer too. We'll talk about that in a second. But please tell us, Kendra, who, what, what club do you represent in the contest? I'm with Ken Post and Bo's Postmasters Club. on Zoom and in person at the same time. And if you come in person, we have food available for you, but if you're online, you have to feed yourself. <laughs> food, that's always a good incentive, isn't it? Yes, take notes. I loved your story about your transformation, your transformation, and you talked about a fellow that you met on a park bench who changed your life through your simple words. And would you mind sharing those words with the rest of us? Oh, that's, it's very, yes. He's, uh, his name is Joey Smith. He, he's, uh, he was a homeless, drunk Christian, really. I sat down in a park and I didn't even know where he came from. But I believe he was just a miracle angel for me because I had such negative attitude about myself and my life and just moping around and when he said that i had a great smile i like i said i finally believed that there was something good about me and so tell a little bit more about joey he actually invited me to bible study a drunk alcoholic christian right <laughs> and, and who better right <laughs> so joey said, uh, yeah and he invited me to Bible study and I went, and then I got in contact with him with a, a ministry that he had. Um, he helps give out sleeping bags mm -hmm. to the homeless. Wow. So he got me involved with Elohim Ministries and, and it expanded and on Thursdays after Toastmasters, I go and hand out clothes to the homeless and hand warmers and we offer prayer along with a good meal. So that's great. Uh, my heart is a little sad right now because uh, he had a stroke, several many strokes, and he's had seizures and stuff like that. And um, but I wanted to write this speech especially for him. Yes. Well, and, and the other thing I wanted to ask you about, you mentioned in your brief interview that you, or maybe it was in your speech, that you invited him to hear the speech. Yeah. And who uh, was that? It, it was the first club contest, right? Yeah. And uh, he went along with it. He even laughed about the alcohol part because he knew it was true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you know, one one thing that he always does is he's got a, such a loving heart toward me, and, and we're best friends. And I know where he lives. We had meals together. But when I would see him when I was walking on the streets, and he would be a little drunk, but he would say, "Do you know how much I love you?" Aww. Right? And then he would come out and say, "This much." Aww. Aww. Well, Kendra, I think we can say the same about you. <laughs> we love you this much. We love all of you this much. Here's for our picture with Sasha. <clears throat> One last big round of applause for our kids.
or participated in a contest this year, starting with the club or area or division or district level, please stand up and everybody please give them a big <laughs> Thank you. 
she get to be chief judge next year? No comments from the peanut gallery, right? <laughs> you get it. Now, unfortunately, I have, after all that, I have one more anticlimactic thing I have to do. I have to switch hats to the chief judge and ask Madam Chairperson, the contest is completed, may I destroy the ballots? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Karen. I apologize for being late getting up here. I was so swept up in the winning. Ooh. 